mysterious apparition it was a quiet, starry night in the small town of Shadow Creek, where the streets were usually deserted after the sun set. Tonight, however, was different. A strange glowing object appeared in the sky, casting an ominous light over the town. The townspeople were initially stunned, but quickly noticed the unusual sight. They gathered in the town square, their eyes glued to the sky as the object slowly descended, its light pulsing rhythmically, among the crowd was Sarah, a young journalist known for her keen curiosity and determination to uncover the truth. She watched intently, her heart pounding, both frightened and excited. When the object landed in the nearby woods, the crowd fell silent. Speculation and fear spread like wildfire. Was it an alien spacecraft? A government experiment gone wrong? No one knew, but everyone was eager to find out, Sarah decided to take matters into her own hands. She quickly grabbed her camera and notebook and without hesitation headed into the woods. His footsteps echoed in the silence and the air was heavy with impatience. As she got closer to the landing pad, she could see the object more clearly. It was a shiny metal vessel, unlike anything she had ever seen, she took a deep breath and approached it carefully. The surface of the ship was smooth, reflecting the moonlight and strange symbols were engraved on its hull. Sarah's mind was filled with questions. What did these symbols mean? Who or what was inside? She knew she had to find out, suddenly, a trap door opened with a screech and a ramp descended to the ground. Sarah's heart pounded in her chest as she saw a figure step out of the ship. It was a humanoid figure, but its features were obscured by a dark cloak. The figure moved gracefully, almost sliding across the ground, and stopped a few feet away from Sarah, and quote, Welcome, Sarah, and quote, the figure spoke in a calm, resonant voice. And quote, We've been waiting for you, and quote, Sarah's eyes widened in surprise. How did this person know his name? What did he want from him? Before she could ask, the figure continued, We come in peace. We need your help. Part 2, The Mystery Mission Sarah's mind was a whirlwind of thoughts and emotions. The figure's words echoed in her head. We need your help. She had so many questions, but she knew now was not the time to hesitate. She calmed down and asked, Who are you and what do you want from me? The figure raised his hand, revealing a glowing orb. I am Alarian, envoy of the Interstellar Council. Our mission is to seek out individuals like you, who have the ability to see beyond the ordinary and the courage to seek the truth. We are facing a crisis that threatens not only our world but yours as well. Sarah's curiosity peaked. What kind of crisis? Ilarion gestured toward the ship. And quote, come in and I'll show you, and quote, with a mixture of anxiety and determination, Sarah followed Ilarion into the ship. The interior was unlike anything she had ever seen. It was both technologically advanced and aesthetically pleasing, with smooth surfaces and soft ambient lighting. Ilarion led her to a large screen displaying a holographic image of the galaxy, and quote, a few months ago, and quote, Ilarion began, we detected an anomaly in a distant part of our galaxy. It was a rift in the fabric of space-time, and it was growing at an alarming rate. If left unchecked, it would consume everything in its path, including Earth. Sarah's heart clenched, how could I help in such a case, Ilarion smiled gently, you have a unique ability, Sarah. Your mind is tuned to frequencies outside the normal human frequency range. This allows you to perceive and understand phenomena that others cannot. We need your help to find a way to stabilize the rift and stop it from spreading, Sarah felt a surge of responsibility. This was bigger than any story she had ever told, what should I do, Ilarion handed her the glowing orb, this was the key of resonance. This will allow you to access the bug and understand its nature. You will have to travel to different locations on Earth to collect data and find a way to stabilize it. Time is of the essence, Sarah nodded, determination burning in her eyes that I will do whatever it takes, part 3, the journey begins Sarah was brought back to Shadow Creek with the resonance key in hand. She knew she couldn't do it alone, so she contacted her trusted friend and colleague, 
Mike, a brilliant scientist with a penchant for extraordinary things. Mike had always been fascinated by the unknown, and when Sarah told him about her encounter with Alarion and the looming crisis, he was immediately ready to take on the challenge let's get to work, Mike said, eyes shining with excitement. We'll need to set up a base of operations and gather as much information as we can about this breach. They turned Sarah's basement into a makeshift laboratory filled with computers, monitors, and scientific equipment. The resonance key glowed softly on a pedestal in the center of the room. Mike examined it closely, marveling at its intricate design and the energy it radiated. This is unbelievable, he whispered. JE hashtag 039, never seen anything like it. It's emitting frequencies that are way beyond the norm. Sarah nodded. Ilarion said it would help us understand the vulnerability. We need to figure out how to use it. Over the next few days, they worked tirelessly, analyzing the data from the resonance key and planning their next move. Sarah reached out to her contacts to gather information about unusual phenomena around the world that might be related to the rift. They identified a few locations that showed signs of unusual activity, a remote mountain range in the Himalayas, an ancient temple in South America, and a mysterious island in the Pacific. We need to visit these sites and collect data, Mike said. Each of them might hold a clue to stabilizing the fault. Sarah nodded. And, we and hashtag 039, LL start with the Himalayas. It's the easiest place to get to, and I have a contact there who can help us. They packed up and set off. As they traveled, Sarah couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. She often saw dark figures in her peripheral vision and heard faint whispers in the wind. She expressed her concerns to Mike, but he assured her that it was just her anxiety, however, Sarah's instincts told her otherwise. She knew they were venturing into unknown territory, and the unknown was always fraught with danger. As they reached the Himalayas and began their climb, Sarah braced herself for the challenges ahead. She was determined to uncover the truth and save both their worlds at any cost. Part 4, The Himalayan Conundrum The journey into the Himalayas was arduous, but Sarah and Mike were driven by a sense of urgency and determination. They met Sarah's contact Tenzin, a local guide with extensive knowledge of the mountains and their secrets. Tenzin had heard rumors of strange things happening in a remote valley and agreed to lead them there. As they traveled through the rugged terrain, the air grew colder and the path more treacherous. Tenzin told stories of ancient legends and mystical creatures said to live in the mountains. Sarah listened intently, wondering if there was any truth to these stories. After several days of walking, they finally reached the valley. It was a strange and desolate place, surrounded by jagged peaks like silent sentinels. The air was charged with supernatural energy and the resonator key began to glow brighter, and, that's it, end quote, Mike said, his voice filled with fear. And, the key is responding to something here, end quote, they set up the equipment and began scanning the area. The results were off the charts, indicating a powerful anomaly nearby. As they moved deeper into the valley, they discovered a hidden cave, the entrance obscured by overgrown vegetation, Tenzin looked uneasy. This place is forbidden. The locals say it's cursed. Sarah felt a shiver run down her spine but insisted. We need to find out what's inside. With Tenzin's reluctant guidance, they entered the cave. The walls were covered in ancient symbols similar to those on the ship. The resonance key emitted energy, illuminating the dark passage. They followed the tunnel until they reached a large room, with a giant crystalline structure at the center. Mike's eyes widened, this must be the source of the anomaly. It was unlike anything I had ever seen, Sarah approached the crystal, sensing its immense power. As she placed the resonance key on its surface, a wave of energy ran through it. Images flooded her mind glimpses of otherworldly landscapes, alien civilizations, and rifts in space-time, she gasped, stepping back, the rift. It's connected to these crystals. We need to find more to understand how to stabilize it. Mike nodded, his face pale. End quote, but if the rift is widening, that means there are more crystals like this. We have to find them all. 
their mission becomes even more important. They need to locate and study these crystals before it's too late. As Sarah leaves the cave, she can't help but think that their every move is being watched. The stakes are higher than ever, and the fate of both worlds rests on their shoulders.